Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we're going to be discussing transportation in plants or movement of water and nutrients within a vascular plant system. As a hydroponic grower, it is important that we understand a plant's uptake of water and the movement of that water and the nutrients that we supply through the plant into the leaves and the transpiration of that water into the environment that we provide so that we can adequately manage that water and nutrients as well as the environment that we are supplying the plant. And that is what I'll try to give you an understanding of in this video. So let's start at the very beginning. So first, I just wanna give you a quick anatomy refresher of plants. At the base, you have the roots, which absorb water and nutrients into the xylem. The xylem can be thought of as a capillary highway that the water and nutrients will travel up and into the plant, being dragged up as the water cohesion pulls the water and nutrients up the plant and as the water is transpired into the air, uh, all of those water and nutrients travel up in kind of like a highway. You then have phloem, which is essentially the vascular part of uh, the plant's vascular system. It is actively transported movement. So you can think of sap moving down a plant and into the areas that the plant requires the nutrients actively moved around the plant. So xylem is up and phloem is vascular tissue that pushes nutrients around the plants. Plants rely on the movement of water through transpiration to carry minerals from the roots to the other cells within the plant. Transpiration is caused by the evaporation of water in the leaf and the diffusion of this water vapor from the leaf. This pulls the water up the xylem. The environment influences the rate of transpiration and plants are adapted to the environment to help them manage their rate of transpiration. So let's talk about the mechanism of transpiration. Transpiration is the evaporation of water from the leaves and the loss of this water vapor to the atmosphere. The loss of water causes the transpirational pull, which causes the water to move up from the roots through the xylem. Because of something called cohesion, the water molecules stick together because they're a polar molecule and this water stickiness pulls the entire column of water up and also any nutrients that are dissolved within that water. This occurs all the way down the column and causes the entire column of water to move up. At the roots, water moves into the root hair cells by osmosis. It then moves from cell to cell in the root by osmosis, as well as through gaps in the cell walls, eventually ending up in the xylem vessels. In the leaves, the water evaporates from spongy mesophyll cells. Because of this, there is a higher concentration of water vapor in the leaf compared to the environment. And as a result, the water diffuses through the stomata on the surface of the leaf and into the environment. So this is largely driven by two special characteristics that water molecules have, cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is the characteristic of water molecules that they will stick to other water molecules. And adhesion is the property of water molecules that causes them to stick to other substances such as the inside of a xylem vessel and you would have seen this in real life as the meniscus that can be seen on the side of a glass of water. We actually use this property a lot on this channel in the form of wicking. Wicking is essentially capillary action. The movement of water within a porous material due to the forces of adhesion, cohesion and surface tension. 
So the rate of transpiration is a measure of the water that is transpired through the leaf at any one time. There are many factors that affect the rate of transpiration. The first is humidity. If the air outside the leaf is arid, then the concentration gradient between the water vapor inside and outside the leaf is steeper than if the air is humid. As a result, the water in the leaf diffuses out of the leaf faster in arid conditions, resulting in a greater rate of transpiration. Other factors that affect the rate are warmer conditions because the water molecules have greater kinetic energy and the velocity of wind, which is a major factor in indoor growing as we have to provide the wind to diffuse the water. If there is no wind, then any water vapor that has diffused out of the leaf remains close to the leaf, resulting in a shallower concentration gradient. If we have airflow, wind, moving air across the leaf, then the concentration gradient is maintained and allows for a higher rate of transpiration. And this is why proper airflow on indoor systems is extremely important because the airflow will affect the transpiration, which affects the water movement within the plant and the nutrient movement within that water. So airflow has a direct effect on the movement of nutrients within plants. Okay, so plants have actually evolved adaptations that control the rate of transpiration within the system. Now, this is extremely important because runaway transpiration would just mean that they absorb all the water as fast as the environment is able to evaporate or transpire the water through their leaves. And this is especially important for plants that have evolved to cope with arid conditions because there's not always a readily available source of water so they have to control the rate of transpiration at the stomata, at the leaf surface. You can essentially think of stomata as little gates that open and close and allow moist air to escape, which turns on and off transpiration. Not completely, but it does regulate it. Plants will close their stomata in the absence of light when there is no photosynthesis occurring and they can close their stomata when conditions are too hot or dry. And you can actually see when a plant has been overcome by the environmental conditions because the plant will start to wilt. This wilting is caused by the loss of too much water and the turgidity, the water pressure within the plant, has dropped to a point where the plant can no longer hold itself up because that water pressure is also in a lot of cases structural to the plant as well. This is called turgid pressure and interestingly because the leaf is now floppy and has less surface area this is actually causing a drop in transpiration as well and once the plant has an adequate amount of water after the environmental factors have calmed down, then the cells within the plant will regain turgidity and recover. Okay, now that we've covered transpiration, which is the movement of water and nutrients up from the roots to the leaves, we're going to talk about translocation, which is the movement of sucrose and amino acids from the place of production to the place that they are going to be utilized for respiration, growth, or storage. Unlike transpiration, translocation can move substances up and down a plant within the phloem of the plant, whereas the transpiration happened within the xylem. The phloem contains sap, which is a mixture of water and organic molecules, including sucrose, amino acids, and fatty acids, most of which are produced within the leaves of a plant, but required in the stem and the roots 
for processes like storage and respiration. So for example, sucrose is required in the roots of the plants, but it's produced in the leaves. Translocation gets the sucrose that is required for aerobic respiration within the roots to the roots from the leaves. And this allows the roots to actively transport nutrients across a concentration gradient and into the cells where transpiration then moves them into parts of the plants that requires those nutrients. Sucrose is also moved from the leaves of the plant to the parts that produce fruit so that the fruit tastes sweet to animals that will then disperse the seeds of the plants. So unlike transpiration, which is a passive process that relies on water's cohesion to uh, move nutrients around the plant, translocation is actually an active process that requires energy at the source, the production area, to essentially pump the dissolved organic molecules into the phloem, which then creates a concentration gradient at the source, which the organic molecules move along from a greater area of concentration to a lesser area of concentration by diffusion. This concentration of organic molecules also creates osmotic pressure because the water moves into the area of high salt concentration essentially and that will increase the pressure within the phloem and push the organic molecules to the sink or the place they're going to be used actively and the plants will use this active form of transportation for different things at different stages throughout its life cycle so for example here i have ginger and turmeric which is about to overwinter so all of the nutrients the sugars the amino acids the fatty acids in the leaves will be drawn back into the rhizome at the base of the plant this allows the plant to overwinter and store all of its nutrients and energy within the rhizome storage and then in spring next year the plant will then use translocation to mobilize those nutrients into new shoots and leaves that will then start to transpire and move nutrients and water up through the plant without any energy cost. And interestingly, translocation is also the mechanism that the nutrients move from the seed and into the first growth of a seedling before transpiration can occur. And there it is. That is how plants transport water, nutrients and resources around their vascular systems. I'm gonna do a nutrient specific video where we look at the absorption of nutrients from hydroponic solutions and into plants and the use of those nutrients for different tissue and processes. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribed for that video. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time on Hoochos.